All right, so now we're going to do a harder specific heat problem. So here it is if you want to pause the screen. You have 100 grams of iron and 100 grams of water. You heat the iron to 80 degrees Celsius and then put it into water, which is 25 degrees Celsius. After a certain time, the iron and water have reached equilibrium. What is the equilibrium temperature? What is delta T for each substance? And then assume that the specific heat of iron is 0 0.46 joules over grams times degrees Celsius, and the specific heat of water is 4.18 joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius, right? So that's a lot to take in. So anytime I have one of these problems where there's so much information and there's like two different types of things that we're looking at here, I like to make tables. So let's take all the information that we were given, put it into a spiffy little table. So iron and we have water. So we know that the mass it's 100 for both, 100 grams. And then we know that the original temperature, Ti, for the iron is 80 degrees Celsius before it goes into the water. And then we know that before the iron is put into the water, the water's initial temperature is 50 degrees Celsius. Now, temperature final is going to be the same for both iron and water. That will be our equilibrium temperature, right? Because equilibrium is the point at which the iron and the water have the same temperature, so there's no more energy transfer, right? So we don't know what this is yet, so we'll just call that X. Then we have our specific heat. So for iron, 0 0.46 uh, let me see if I can fit this in. Joules times degrees Celsius. Then we have for water 4.18 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. All right. And then for the energy transfer, in this problem, we're going to use this cool little thing called negative Q equals Q. And what this essentially means is that heat loss equals heat gained, right? Because you know from, I hope, past experience, like say you're making, um, I don't know, pasta or something. You put the cold pasta into the water, right? And the pasta warms up, but then you take some of the heat energy from the water into the pasta. So, there, so the water loses some heat and the pasta gains some heat, right? That might have been a bad example, I don't know. Anyway, there's a transfer of heat. So we know that the transfer for the iron is going to be negative, and the transfer for the water is going to be positive, right? So typically when you have something hotter interact with something cooler, the cooler thing is going to get hotter, and the hotter thing is going to get cooler, right? So, now we don't need this. We've got our nifty little table. Um, right? So then, what we can do is we can use our handy dandy little equation that we used in the last video, right? And But what we're going to do is we're going to set up both sides of it, but then for the iron side, we're just going to make everything negative, right? Because that's negative Q equals Q. Everything on the water side is going to stay positive. So first I'm going to set it all positive, and then I'm just going to make it all negative. If that made sense. We'll just, let's just do it. So if we start off with, we start off with our C. 0.46. I'm just going to drop the unit so it doesn't get too messy. Times our mass, 100. Times our change in temperature, which is what we don't know. So we're going to have 80 minus X equals the uh, specific heat of water times our mass, 100. Times our change in temperature, which is 25 minus X, right? All right, so now let's make everything on this side negative. Negative 0 0.46 times negative 100 times negative 80 minus negative x equals 4.18 times 100 times 25 minus x. It's a really bad five. Oh, God. Okay. All right. So these two negatives cancel. So it's essentially the same thing that we had before. 
But then here, saying negative 80 plus x is essentially the same thing as saying x minus 80, right? So do you see that? Negative 80 plus x, you just swap them. Equals 4.18 times 100 times 25 minus x. All right, so now we've simplified it a little bit. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to uh, want to simplify it even more, okay? So we're going to multiply stuff across. It's going to be fun. We're going to move x to one side, yada, 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 right? So let me use a calculator just in case I get all this math right because I have actually filmed videos where I didn't get the math right, and it was pretty simple math, and it was pretty embarrassing. X minus 80 equals... Uh, 418. Alright, then we multiply across again. 46X. Can you still see that? Yeah, okay. Good. Minus... 3,680 equals 10,450 minus 480x. All right, now let's move those x's over to the other side. So add this across and add that across. So 46 plus 480, 464x equals 10045 plus 3680, right, cool, 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 14,130, put some commas in here, all right, and then we simply uh, divide 14,130 by 464, we get that our x is 30.45 three degrees Celsius, right? So in our original problem, it asked for the equilibrium temperature, and that is our X here, right? It's also uh, temperature final for both iron and water, right? Do you see how that works? But then it also asks us to find delta T for each substance. So what we do is we plug this number into T final minus T initial for both iron and water. So T final is 30.453 and initial is 80. So subtract that minus 80, which is negative 49.547 degrees Celsius. And then for our water, we had a final of 30.453 minus 80, oh, not 80, whoops, minus 25, which equals 30.453 minus, which equals 5.453 degrees Celsius. So that is the second part of our problem. And yeah, so it, that was a little more complicated than the last problem, but as long as you remember negative Q equals Q and Q equals CM delta T, you'll be good to go. Ooh, it's the end screen. Click on one of these links to be directed to that playlist. And don't forget to subscribe!